Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with another edition of the Versus series. In today's episode, we're going to be comparing one of the original late 90s or early 2000s Rode NT1s versus one of the current production run versions of the Rode NT1 to see what the differences are and see which one sounds better. But before we get into the tests, let's go ahead and talk briefly about the differences in the build quality. First up on the outside, the most notable difference will be the color. The original has this tan or gray paint job to it, and the current model is going to be black. The grills on both versions seem to be very similar in terms of strength and mesh. The only difference is the color of the grills. The bottom of the microphone is slightly different as well, where the original requires a screwdriver to access the internals, while the current model unscrews by hand. And the only other external difference that's noticeable is the weight, where the current model is about 70 grams heavier. Then when we look at the internals, that's where things start to get interesting, at least for some people. I will admit I don't know what any of this stuff on the PCB board does, but you can tell there are quite a few differences in terms of components and layouts. The PCB board on the original is also mounted sideways for some reason, not quite sure about that. And then when we look at the capsule, the original has a center terminated capsule, while the current run uses an edge terminated capsule. And that is about it for the differences in the build quality, now let's jump to the tests. We'll start out on the original NT1, and for both of these microphones, I will be connected to the Focusrite 18i20 second gen. Gain will be set at 1 o'clock, and make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of them. But as far as the pricing of this microphone, according to Recording Hacks, this originally cost around $530. It has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 34 dB, an EIN of less than 13 dBA, a max SPL of 128 dB, and an impedance of 40 ohms. Now we are on the current production model of the Rode NT1. This will cost you between 230 and 270 US dollars, depending on the kit that you get. This also has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, but this has a sensitivity of around negative 29 dB, an EIN of less than 4.5 dBA, a max SPL of 132 dB, and an impedance of 100 ohms. Now I am spinning around the original NT1 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around to 180 degrees. Here's what the rear of the microphone sounds like. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, there we go, and then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now I am spinning around the current Rode NT1 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around to 180 degrees. Here's what the rear of the microphone sounds like. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, there we go. And then we will rotate and end at the front of the, the new, the current Rode NT1. <laughs> Why did I forget what it was? Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard the original NT1 rejects. Now typing like a maniac on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much the current Rode NT1 rejects of that. And now I am typing on the sad W's to test the rejection of Gatoron Blue switches of the original Rode NT1. And now I am typing on the sad W keys to see how the current NT1 rejects that, in case you're a game and folk person type thing. Now I am right on top of the original Rode NT1, and here is how the audio sounds. Now I am right on top of the current Rode NT1 to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the original Rode NT1 with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it sounds. About three inches off of the current NT1 with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how the audio is sounding. About one foot away from the original NT1, one foot away from the current NT1, 
Two feet away from the original road and T1. Two feet away from the current road and T1. And about four feet away from the original road and T1. And about four feet away from the current road and T1. <laughs> We've got a mic versus the same model of mic And all I wanna know in this fight Is which of the mics will be right Or are they the same? Now, let's find out Honestly, that's what all of this is about. Sorry for the loud noises outside. It's about finding the sluttle, sluttle differences. <laughs> I can't speak. Let's just go to the outro because I'm an idiot. And the winner of this Versus series, I don't think is going to surprise anyone. It is the current production run model of the Rode NT1. And I think this wins both on paper as well as strictly by the sound. When we look at the specs, the current production model is a big improvement over the original. You get a better self noise by almost 10 dBA. You get an improved max SPL and a hotter sensitivity. So if you were just a spec junkie and you just wanted to look at the sheet and say which one's better, the current production model is going to win. But then we get to the most important aspect of the microphones, and that is how they sound. And again, the current model is the winner here by far. When we listen to the original, the top end sounds overboosted, it sounds harsh, it sounds artificial. And as soon as we look at and compare the frequency response graphs, it becomes abundantly clear why the original sounds the way it does in comparison to the current model. The original has a nearly 5 dB boost around 12 kHz, and to me that is just too aggressive, and it sounds unnatural, unpleasant, and I am not a fan of it. But when we get to the current production model, the top end boost is much more subtle, it is much more broad, and to my ears it offers a much more balanced and pleasing and smooth sound across the entire frequency range and not just in the top end. So as far as specs, as far as sound, on everything that I threw it at, I think the current production model of the Rode NT1 is the winner. In conclusion, I'm a really big microphone nerd and that's why I think it's pretty cool to own a piece of history and own one of the original Rode NT1s because I am such a big fan of the current model and I do recommend it so much. But in terms of usefulness of the original Rode NT1 in 2021, I don't see any reason why anybody really ought to be seeking out one of the originals because in my opinion, the current model is better in every single way, in terms of sound, in terms of specs, in terms of reliability, and you also get a 10-year warranty. So today, 2021, it may be cool for history's sake, but usefulness, not really. That is going to wrap up for this edition of the Versus series. Like always, I want to pass the question off to you. What do you think? Do you prefer the current version of the Rode NT1? Or are you a bigger fan of the original with the much brighter and bigger boost to the top end? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, 
thumbs down. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, which we just got partnered in, big round of applause. Go check out podcastage.com slash Discord. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by turning off my AC, first of all. And also, you can get your name over here by joining at the $5 tier or higher by clicking that join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage. Until next time, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you next week.